Welcome to the Honor XLS Form Authoring Webinar. My name is Sylvia Msula, I'm the Support Manager at Honor. I'm going to be the facilitator for this training. I'm going to share my screen. Um, my colleague Caroline will be responding to your questions. So in the course of this webinar, if you have any questions, feel free to post them at the Q&A section and uh, they will be responded to by one of my uh, my colleagues. I'm not going to take any questions at this moment until at uh, the end of the webinar, but if you have any questions, just post them at the Q&A uh, section, which is at the right-hand section. Uh, so I'll share my screen. I'm going to give you a brief overview of uh, what we are going to do. Um, the first thing we're going to uh, to cover is um, I'm going to uh, to cover uh, the XLS form authoring basics. Uh, in the basics, you're going to talk about uh, the XLS form syntax, uh, the XLS form authoring uh, basic tips. Uh, we are also going to uh, to look at the question types, the various question types that are supported in XLS forms. Uh, we're also going to have a look at the various question formats. Um, we look at validation checks, things like skip logic, constraints, how you can be able to tailor those constraint uh, messages to be helpful to your enumerators or whoever is viewing your data. Then we are also going to look at advanced XLS form authoring uh, features. Uh, this will include the multiple language support, uh, cascading selects using choice filter. We look at how you can be able to do calculations, how you can be able to group questions. This will include repeat groups, uh, index repeats. Uh, we'll also look at appearance attributes. Um, we'll also look at uh, preloading CSV. In preloading CSV, we are going to look into detail uh, the pool data function. How can you be able to uh, preload uh, existing data into your form. We look at the search uh, function, how you can be able to populate uh, search options, select options from an existing CSV and use it in your form. We'll also look at metadata. I'll also open the floor for a Q&A session. Under XLS form basics, so what is XLS form? So uh, XLS form is a standard that was derived, which is which basically means uh, you design your form in Excel, uh, any Excel software that you use, whether it's Google Spreadsheet or whether you're using uh, LibOffice, uh, you can be able to, or Microsoft Excel, you can be able to design your, your XLS form using this uh, standard. So you just have to make sure you have an Excel file. Then there's a set of rules that you have to follow in order to convert your Excel file into the XLS form uh, syntax. So once you've designed your survey into Excel, uh, it's uploaded it's uploaded to Honor, then it's converted into X form and you can be able to collect your data in various ways, either using mobile applications such as ODK, Geo ODK, or you can also use web applications such as Enketo. So this makes it easier for people who are using, uh, who are having surveys. And instead of using the paper questionnaire, you can convert it into a digital form upload it into an aggregate server such as Honor, then you can be able to collect this form, uh, this, you can be able to collect data using this form. So in terms of the basic syntax of uh, the XLS form, uh, we have the main, we have uh, the main worksheet, which is called the survey worksheet. Um, the survey worksheet is, uh, where you define your questions. This is where you decide, you define the way your questions will look like. Do you want your questions, uh, are they going to be text questions? Will they be integers? Will your, does your survey 
from supposed to take any images, you want to record any geodata. So this survey worksheet, in the survey worksheet, this is where you define how your questions uh, will look at. So you need to add uh, a worksheet called the survey as seen on this, uh, as seen on this um, screen. Then the survey worksheet, there are three mandatory or three primary columns that you need. Uh, we have uh, the type. This is where you define the type of question and we look at the different type of questions that are supported in the XLS form. Then we also have the other primary column that is needed, which is the name. This is where you define the variable name. Um, this is uh, like a data dictionary. Then we have uh, a label. The label, this is what uh, will be displayed to your enumerator or whoever is doing the questionnaire. This is what they will see. So the three main columns, are mandatory col columns that you need in your survey worksheet are type, name, and label. The second uh, worksheet that is necessary that you must have in your XLS form is the choices worksheet. The choices worksheet, uh, this is where you have all your options. If you have select multiple questions, this is where all your choices will be. There are uh, basic tips, basic rules that you need to follow when designing your XLS form. One of them is making sure that you test your form often. Testing your form ensures that if you're working on a questionnaire that has 100 questions, you need to maybe just design uh, 10 questions first, upload it to your own account, test it, make sure everything is working as expected before you continue working on it. It makes it easier to troubleshoot as opposed to working on all the 100 questions, uploading it and making so many errors, then you cannot be able to identify where you went wrong. The other thing that you need to follow is uh, you need to adhere to the XLS syntax. This means that uh, the first thing, the file name, the Excel file needs to be set in .xls or .xlsx format. Then the name should not contain any special characters. Uh, then it shouldn't have any spaces. The worksheets, as you've seen before in the previous screens, uh, we have it's surveyed. It's written in lowercase. S is not uh, capital S, and also for the choices, it's in lowercase. So you also have to make sure that that remains the same. The first worksheet will always be survey, and the second worksheet will always be choices. It's not surveys and it's not choice. So you have to make sure that the names, uh, the worksheet names are written appropriately. Then the field names have to be unique. We mentioned that uh, the second uh, primary column is the name where you define your variable name. You have to make it unique. You cannot have two names with the same uh, variable name. Every name has to be unique. Um, the other thing that you have to ensure the field name should be short, ideally less than 30 characters. Then you also have to stick to a standard, a naming convention. If you are using the camel case convention, make sure that is what you are using. If you are separating different words with uh, underscore or dashes, stick to it. This will make it, it will make your form easier, especially if you are working on a very, on a huge uh, survey. Then the other thing is you have to make sure that the column headers are in lowercase. Uh, as we mentioned, the three main are type, name, and label. We have others that we look at, but type is also in lowercase, name is in lowercase, and label is in lowercase. So you need to ensure that uh, this is the case and you do not spell anything in uppercase. Otherwise, you cannot be able to upload your survey and test it. 
Then uh, we have a website called xlsform.org, which will be a best friend when you're authoring uh, your survey. So we'll go through that at a later stage too. So we are going to look at question types now. So for question types, we have different question types. Depending on the kind of survey uh, you're conducting, the question types might differ. If you are collecting uh, data in an area whereby you like to get photos of a water point, then it means uh, you, you need to be able to include the question type photo. If you want to get GPS points, you need to in, uh, have a question type called GeoPoint so that you can be able to take uh, GPS coordinates. Then if you want to be able to get a number, a whole input, uh, like a, a whole number input, uh, then the question type in this case will be an integer. For things whereby you want people to type in a name or type in a sentence, a name of a school, a name of a hospital, then the question type in this case will be text. So each row in your Excel spreadsheet will correspond to a question in your survey. Uh, as you can see, if your question type is a text, uh, on a mobile device, if you're using ODK Collect, you know, on this presentation, we are going to use ODK Collect uh, as an example. Uh, you can see uh, the key the part prompts uh, user to type in a text. So uh, to indicate that the question requires someone to enter a text input. Then for integer, the same applies. The key part uh, will prompt someone to enter a whole digit, and someone can only enter a whole number for an integer type of question. So there are also other, for, uh, other types of questions like decimals, if you are taking measurements such as uh, land, if you want to know the size of the land or you want to measure the length or the distance, you can also have uh, decimal inputs. So in this case, the question type has to be defined as a decimal. Uh, for GPS, uh, if you like to be able to collect uh, geolocation uh, points, you need to be able to define that as geopoint. So the type of question on your survey worksheet has to be geopoint. Uh, then the name, as you mentioned, it's uh, the variable name. In this case, it's the GPS. Uh, so the label is what will be displayed then in this case, someone can be able to record the GPS coordinates of a specific location. For photos, if someone uh, wants to take an image, maybe it might be of a structure, it might be of a person, it might be of a water point, then the question type in this case uh, will be image. So if you are using uh, for applications such as GODK or ODK Collect, for mobile applications, someone is prompted to take a photo. For web applications, uh, you'll be prompted to upload a photo for such uh, kind of questions. Then you can also be able to collect uh, things like debt. So users can be able to record that and the question type in this case has to be that. So you can record things like date of birth, uh, child's date of birth. Uh, we also have uh, notes. Uh, sometimes you like to give enumerators or the person who is filling out that specific uh, questionnaire or survey more information about a section or about a specific section in your questionnaire. In this case, you will add a note. A note will not prompt them to enter anything. It will just be displayed and will provide instructions uh, to the person who is doing the questionnaire. So the question type in this context will be not. So we have... Uh, Notes, uh, most of the time people usually confuse notes and hints. So 
In addition to the type name and label, we have uh, another uh, column uh, header that you can add called hint. So a hint is used to provide more information about a specific question. If you're asking someone how many people live in this household, you can provide more information and just ask them to include all the members in the household so that they can know you're asking them to include information about everyone in that household. So you can use hints to do that. So hints, for hints, you need to add a column and add the hint from that specific column. They apply to specific questions. For notes, notes are question type. So notes will appear as instructions and on their own screen. Hints will appear as italic, as you can see on the screen. They'll appear as italic uh, below the question. So we got a few questions from the signups uh, where people asked uh, whether or not GPS derived polygons can be entered as opposed to point locations. Uh, we just talked about GPS points, which allow you to collect a, a location for a single point. So if you'd like to get uh, locations based on polygons, we have what we call geotress. Uh, so in this case, you have to make sure that your question type is um, geotress. And in, uh, you can also be able to use geotress when you're using uh, web applications such as uh, Enketo. Then there was also another question uh, about is uh, barcode scanning possible? Yes, barcode scanning is possible. And this is applicable, especially if you're using mobile uh, applications. And you can be able, as long as you define uh, the question type as uh, barcode and you need to install a barcode application on that device so that when someone gets to that uh, question, they are prompted to scan so that uh, they are able to scan using that application. Then can I take, uh, there's another person who asked if they can be able to record an interview. You can be able to record an interview, either an audio or a video. You just have to make sure that the question type, if you're recording an audio, you need to make sure that the question type is audio. And if you're recording a video, you need to make sure that the question type is a uh, video. So the next uh, section that you are going to look at are uh, the multiple choice questions. So the multiple choice questions will always, uh, the options will always be on the choices worksheet. So if you have a, uh, a questionnaire that requires you to have multiple options, you'll, all those options will be on the choices worksheet. So in your survey worksheet, uh, you will define uh, your list, your list name. So the question will be select one, then the list name. Uh, you'll obviously have the variable name and the label. Your choices worksheet will have the list name that was defined in your survey worksheet. Please note that uh, on my in my survey worksheet, I said select one from the food list name. So in my choices worksheet, I specified the list of food items. So we have rice, we have chicken, and we have other. So whatever list that is defined in your survey worksheet, that list name has to be specified in your choices worksheet. If you do not specify that food item, as per example, then you'll be told that there's a missing list name. So you need to make sure that the list name is defined in the choices worksheet. And the list, as you can see, uh, select one questions are always um, identified with uh, radio buttons on, on the mobile application or ODK Collect. So for select multiple questions, if you have 
questions which require users to select more than one option. In this case, you'll have to make sure those uh, questions uh, are called select multiple. For the previous one, you only wanted a user or someone to select one option. For the second one, you want someone to be able to select more than one option. If you want someone to select more than one option, in this case, the question type has to be select multiple, then you need to define the list name. The list name that is defined on the survey worksheet has to be specified in the choices worksheet. And list names uh, for select multiple, options for select multiples are identified by check boxes, which shows that someone can be able to select more than one option from the options provided. Uh, the next section that we are going to look at are form validation checks. The form validation checks uh, that we have, um, we have skip logic. So there's a column uh, called relevance which helps you be able to define or evaluate your skip logic. For instance, if you are asking someone to specify the age of uh, a respondent and they've already identified the edge and you like them to record uh, the mid upper circumference you can only record mid upper circumference upper arm circumference for children under five years old so you can add a relevance condition or skip logic that specifies edge should only be asked for this uh, mid upper circumference should only be asked for children aged less than five, uh, less or equal to five years old. So relevance helps you be able to do this. You can also use a uh, skip logic on select one question. Uh, let's say uh, you have uh, a question and you like to know if someone likes uh, a specific beverage or a specific drink or a specific food type or specific or pizza, you can only ask them what's their favorite topping if they say they like uh, that uh, pizza. If they don't like it, you won't ask them. So the question will be skipped. So if you have questions that are not supposed to be asked to specific uh, respondents, they can be able to be skipped and you can only ask relevant questions to depending on the responses provided by someone so skip logic helps you uh, be able to do this uh, for select one questions you just have to make sure you specify the field name of the skip and that was provided uh, in the previous uh, in the previous uh, question. For select multiple, you, you'll notice that we introduced the selected expression. So for instance, if you have an other option, sometimes you have options whereby people have to specify what other is. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use an example to show you uh, this. So uh, you can, as you can see, uh, you can only ask, let's say you have an option where people have, there is an other option, so people can only select uh, everything else, but if other is not asked, uh, they won't be able to uh, respond to it. Uh, the other thing that uh, skip logic might be useful in, is uh, use of, by using conditional statements. Uh, in this case, uh, you can be able to combine the and or or statements uh, to make sure that if certain conditions are met, then ask this question. So if um, it's not uh, the date of birth is between this time and this time, ask this specific question 
or else do not ask. So you can be able to use and or or in conjunction with your relevance condition to ask specific questions. On conditional statements, uh, you can be able to combine uh, and uh, or or conditional statements uh, with, with your skip logic, with your skip statements, uh, relevant conditions. So if two, you can be able to use two relevant conditions. If you're using two relevant conditions, then it means uh, you should use and if it's one or either, then it means you should use or. So on the constraints, uh, sometimes uh, you like to be able to have some validation on your on your responses so that users are not able to enter either exit uh, values that exceed the responses you expect or values that are just uh, not appropriate. Uh, in this case, uh, let's say for instance, you are capturing something to do with edge and you're asking uh, users uh, or respondents how old they are. So you can be able to add a constraint. Uh, constraints are usually used in conjunction with uh, operators. Uh, the normal mathematical operators are used uh, with constraints. So you can be able to use constraints to evaluate and make sure that only accepted values uh, can be entered for specific um, fields. So for instance, if someone enters an age that is greater than 150 and you do not expect an, uh, maybe a respondent to be more than 151 or the age is just too high, you can have a constraint or you don't want zero values, you can have constraints so that if you don't want negative values in your, in your integer options, you can have constraints whereby you say you don't want uh, responses which are less or equal to um, zero. Um, then uh, constraints can have uh, constraint messages you can tailor the constraint message. If you don't include the constraint message, a default message will be indicated showing, sorry, this value is invalid. As instead of having that specific uh, message, you can have a message added to it, which just shows uh, the response that was entered is uh, not valid. Uh, you can also use a constraint for select multiple questions. Uh, for instance, um, if you have a, a select multiple question and you want, the list is really long, but you just want users to select the best three or the best four options from the select multiple uh, list of options provided, you can use uh, the count selected function as a, in your constraint and say that you only want uh, three responses out of all the options. They should only select the best three or the best uh, two values. So you can use count selected less or equal to three or depending on the value that you want. So constraints will also help you be able to use this in your select uh, multiple questions. Please note that this is in the select multiple options whereby users are able to select more than one uh, response. Uh, we are going to move to the final section uh, whereby we are going to look at advanced XLS uh, form syntax. On advanced XLS form syntax, uh, the first thing you're going to look at is uh, multiple language support. On multiple language support, um, this just means that uh, XLS forms, you can have your form in multiple languages. You can have your form in English, Swahili, Vietnamese, Somali, or any other language that you're evaluating in. You don't have uh, your enumerators or whoever is interviewing doesn't have to translate uh, the language, uh, the questionnaire 
after reading it in English, then translating it to the local language. It just means you can be able to translate your questionnaire to the local language during your XLS form authoring or the survey design period. So to do this, you need uh, to make sure that um, all the lab labels that are seen by the interviewer are translated. This means things like the label or the hint which are displayed to the interviewer should be translated. The label, the hint, the constant message, anything that is displayed to the interviewer or whoever is doing the questionnaire needs to translate that into that local language. Then tra the translation is not automatic, it has to be written down. So it means that once you've uh, written your questionnaire in your initial language, you need to add another column, as you can see in this case, add another column with the translated version of that question. Of that question. So it's not automatic. You need to do the translation yourself or get someone who can be able to do the translation. And you can have as many languages uh, as possible. Uh, then uh, the other thing you are going to look at are cascading selects using choice filter. So cascading selects uh, group your list of options into a subset of select options. Let's say for instance you are collecting data within a specific region and you want to be able to group them you just want to be able to see all the countries that are in africa all the countries that are in europe so that if someone selects africa they can only be able to see countries within africa and if someone selects uh, a specific uh, country they should only be able to see cities within that uh, country so cascading selects will help you uh, do that so for cascading select work you need to specify the type of question. In this case, it's a select one question. The main thing to consider is you need to add another column header called choice filter, um, not the way choice filter is written. Uh, then you can be able to filter your choices uh, depending on what uh, your list is based on. So in this case, we are filtering based on local location so we have our first option which is country and uh, sub, uh, subsequent list is city so we are filtering uh, based on uh, cities so you can be able to see uh, our choice filter is uh, we need to add the attribute the choice filter attribute on the choices worksheet the difference is we also need to add an extra column called choice filter on this choice filter, we add all the filters based on the countries. So for the cities, all the cities that are in US will be defined as uh, US. All the cities that are in France have to be specified as France. The choice filter attribute has to be France. All the cities that are in South Africa have to appear in South Africa and all the cities that are in South Korea have to do that. So the main thing to note is make sure when you survey worksheet you add the choice filter column on your choices worksheet. Uh, make sure you add the choice filter attribute and filter depending on the different things, whether it's location, whether it's a list of items or whichever thing you're trying to filter. Um, the other thing that you can be able to do uh, in XLS form are calculations. So you can be able to do all the calculations including uh, divisions, additions, multiplications, anything that a calculation can be able to be done in, a, in XLS form. So you just need to make sure that for any calculation field, you need to know that calculation fields will never be displayed. They are always hidden. So the question type for a calculation field are calculate. So you need to add a question type called calculate. 
The calculation will happen on, the, on a column called calculation. So you also need to add a column uh, called calculation. So you can also round off your numbers to the nearest uh, whole number. You can also be able to perform multiplications, additions, as you can see uh, in this uh, specific example. Uh, we also have a grouping of questions. So grouping of questions just means you can be able to put related questions uh, together. Um, we have uh, the other thing that is called uh, repeat groups. Uh, repeat groups, as it mentioned, since you can be able to group things together, from the example you can see we have begin group and end group group so from this example uh, we have all related things that have to do with uh, this uh, child uh, under group so with repeat group it's a way of asking a set of questions repeatedly so if you have a series of questions that you are asking to several people instead of repeating these questions uh, and having 100 questions of the same set, you just put them in a group and call this group begin, re begin repeat and make sure whenever you open a repeat, uh, 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 repeat group, you have to close it. So instead of having a set of questions whereby you, you are repeating all the time and you might have like, a very long questionnaire you can just group them in a group and call it a repeat group um, so just because you can be able to have uh, those sets of questions repeated sometimes you can have an uh, an endless loop of uh, repeats so instead of having that endless loop of repeats uh, you can introduce what we call a uh, repeat count. So repeat counts will help you be able to end that loop. So you add a column called repeat counts, specify the number of times you will want that repeat group to, to be, if it's five, if it's two, or you can use a previous variable uh, from a question that was asked, so that will only repeat the number of times that you like it to be. Um, the other thing about repeats, we have um, index repeats. So index repeats uh, help you to be able to reference uh, from a previous repeat. So if you have two repeat groups and you like to refer to the previous repeat group that you had, you can use an indexed uh, repeat group to do that. You just uh, then uh, the other thing that uh, you can be able to do is we have appearance attributes. Uh, someone was asking if they can have a table on their questionnaire, a table questionnaire. This is possible. You have various appearance attributes which help you uh, define the way you like your question to be. If it's a date, maybe you want to only have month and year displayed, or you just want to have the year displayed. Maybe you want uh, a longer text uh, widget whereby the text uh, is much, the text column is much more bigger. Maybe you want to have all the select options be in a horizontal line. So the appearance attribute helps you do that. So to use the appearance attributes, you need to add the appearance column. Um, we also, you can also be able to preload uh, CSV data. This means sometimes you've already collected data uh, on a previous uh, year or a previous month, and you're going back to evaluate this set of people, but you do not want to repeat the same questions. Instead of doing that, you can preload that, uh, those questions in your current questionnaire so that people can just uh, confirm this. To do that, you can use the pool data function, and the pool data function is usually written on the calculation uh, field, on the calculation column. So to use the pool data function, 
you need to use uh, the pool data, then refer the first uh, attribute is the CSV that you are pulling the data from. Then you need to mention the field you are pulling uh, that specific field. You can be able to spe specify which column within the CSV you are pulling. You can be able to display the information that is being pulled in a text or in a note or in another question. Uh, you can also be able to pull, if you have a very long list of options, instead of having them in a choices worksheet, you can also pull that from a CSV file. In this case, you can use uh, the search function, and the search function is usually done from the appearance uh, column. So the other thing uh, that is supported on XLS forms is metadata. So metadata is just hidden information that is usually automatically captured by a device. And um, this might be the start date of the survey. Maybe you'd like to know how much time it takes to complete a survey, what time did they start, what time did it end. The day of the survey you can automatically capture it and not have to have a date field uh, the device ID, which is uh, the IMEI number, so that you can be able to know which device collected this information. You can also be able to capture the subscriber ID, the SIM serial number, uh, if there are SIM cards um, in those devices that are being used, and the phone number if it's available. So please note that metadata is only captured for devices and mobile devices alone. For people who are using the web applications, it's not possible to capture metadata. Uh, then metadata is hidden from the whomever is filling out the questionnaire. They won't be able to see it. It's hidden. It's, it's automatically captured and they don't have to enter this. So I think now you should be ready to author your XLS forms. Um, for more information on how forms are authored, uh, please uh, visit this address that's on your screen, which is xlsform.org. Uh, all the, some of the sample examples that are there. Uh, we'll also paste uh, test examples that were used on this presentation on the YouTube channel so that you can be able to access them. But some of them, you can also find them on xlsform.org. Uh, feel free to reach out if you have any comments. So I'll just open uh, the floor for questions. Someone is asking, is it possible to translate into many languages the choices? So it's possible to translate the choices worksheet. Uh, as I mentioned, everything that is displayed to the numerator can be translated. So you just have to make sure that you introduce, uh, let's say the label in your choices worksheet, you have to add uh, the second language to for the choices worksheet. Then if you, you are using um, choice filter, if you're using cascading selects, all those locations have also to be added for the second language that is being used. Please go to xlsfund.org if you have, uh, there are more examples there. We'll upload the video on YouTube and paste the examples that we had here. If you have specific questions, feel free to reach us uh, on support at honor.io. But all the examples that I've used on this presentation, we'll also share them and paste them on our YouTube channel. Okay, thank you so much uh, for joining today. Uh, it was a pleasure having you today. I'm sorry for those who we had a few issues and they couldn't be able to see the screen. We post the video on YouTube and as I mentioned, please feel free to reach out on support at honor.io. I'll paste all the examples that I used on this presentation on YouTube, uh, 
under the video just feel free to have a look at that and for those beginners uh, please just have a look at xlsform.org it has from basics to advanced topics and for those who have uh, some of our clients feel free to reach out and let us know if you need help in troubleshooting and share some of the forms that you are authoring with us thank you so much for joining have a wonderful evening <laughs>